everybody. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Julie Chen, Leslie Moonves, and CBS Media Center here at USC Annenberg. I am Melissa Yang, and I am your guest host for the Annenberg's new Live with Alumni series that features alumni discussing hot topics related to professional development, career growth, and trends within communications, journalism, and public relations. Thank you for joining us as we kick off our very first Facebook Live. And be sure to ask questions in the comment section below. Now let's meet our panelists. We have Tiffany Everett, Director of Digital and Influencer Marketing and Social Media at Golan. Lindsay Miller, News and Culture Director at Pop Sugar, and Corey Berg, Senior Executive Vice President of Business Affairs for Sony Pictures Television. So, welcome guys, thank you for thank coming. You. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. So you all have a wealth of experience. What does it mean to be a good leader in today's marketplace? Tiffany, would you like to start? Sure, so I think know your industry, right? So make sure you're getting the right newsletters from the right people, you're with the right groups, you're doing the right networking. Um, I'm subscribed to so many different newsletters where I'm tapped into what's going on. As director of digital, I'm also tapped into what's going on on the different social platforms. So directly, what are they doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, it's not just about your brand or client, really knowing what your industry is up to. So what would be a couple newsletters that you would recommend? Let's see, definitely Two Filter, TechCrunch, um, Adweek, is amazing um, in the social space. And again, each of the individual social platforms have their own blog and newsletters. So I'd reach out you know, to them, go onto their website, um, because social media, as we know, changes every day. There's something new that um, is different. So staying in tune and in touch with those changes. Right, and Lindsay, how about you? Well, I was gonna say to go off of that, being adaptable I think is just so important, especially for me working in digital media. I always tell people my job as it exists today really wouldn't have, say, five years ago. Mm -hmm. So constantly there's new platforms evolving. I mean, there was Snapchat and more recently Instagram stories. So mm -hmm. not only to, do you have to be able to adapt, but as a leader you really have to uh, make people feel confident and enthused about trying new things and experimenting um, and feeling like they have that room to sort of experiment and sometimes fail because we're all figuring it out together. So I think that's really important today. Right. I think adaptability is absolutely critical. I'm in the TV space and you know, five years ago we didn't have, you know, a Netflix and Amazon, a Hulu and Apple. Mm -hmm. And so we've had to sort of change on a dime and they're very important players in our business. Uh, so that's very important. Um, I would add to that, I think uh, a really important uh, skill is communication. You got to communicate with your team, manage expectations, tell them what you expect of them. Uh, let them know what success looks like um, and you know praise them when they've done a great job right I feel like communication is so important because that transcends any industry you're in regardless mm -hmm. of whether you're just in media or public relations I mean if you're in business or in law you got to be able to figure out how to talk to people right? right but people are uncomfortable having those conversations and, and as a leader you know the buck does stop with you so you've got to be in charge and you've got to sort of lead that culture I think that actually segues perfectly into our next question, which is, you know, young alumni often fall into two different categories, right? They're either running blind, trying to figure out what they want to do, or they believe they know everything. So what advice would you give to either group? Is there one that kind of has the right mentality over the other, or are they both still trying to figure things out? I will tackle the one that thinks they know everything. <laughs> Um, I would advise just to listen, right? Listen, <laughs> go in humbly, be adaptable, just like kind of what we talked about with some other things, but really listen because there's a lot to learn. I know you're going to come in. We see a lot of people coming in into the workplace. You know, when you have CEOs that are 30 years old, you know, running these tech, you know, tech companies um, and they don't want to start in the mailroom. However, there's a reason for everything and listen and be open and be willing to take the smallest, you know, job or the smallest task and, you know, prove, prove your way. I would agree with that. I'd also flip it, and I think companies have to do a better job about listening to people that are coming mm -hmm. in uh, because they do have very different experiences, and um, I think they bring a lot to the table. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I would say, too, you know, talking about self-doubt a little bit, if, you know, talking about the students that feel like they are running blind, I think especially for women, um, I think it's important to have confidence and to recognize that not everybody else has it figured out. There's not like some grand conspiracy and you're the only one that no doesn't. One does. Yeah, right. but it's hard though. It's hard, but there's yeah. no job that you will be fully prepared for until you're actually in that job. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind that you know as you progress in your career, it's okay to say yes to things that feel a little bit scary because it's the only way that you're going to grow. And yeah. frankly, 
if you're not scared, even as you get promoted, you know, through the you know, different companies, if you're not scared, then it's probably not the right job for you because right. you mm -hmm. you should be challenging yourself. Yeah. It shouldn't be comfortable. Should be boring. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's something with my own career that I kind of struggle with is finding where do I find a challenging job and where a place I can grow, but also somewhere that I feel like I can, you know, share my wealth of knowledge. And mm -hmm. I think that's a, a truly a battle that you face throughout your career, no matter what stage you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't change. <laughs> well, that's something to look forward to, <laughs> I guess. Get very comfortable with it. <laughs> so, Corey, I wanted to ask you, what is one of the greatest lessons you've learned when it comes to leading teams and management? You've wow. been out of Annenberg for, you know, Enough years. years. <laughs> Let's not while. go there. For a while. But with that comes a lot of experience. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think the greatest thing I've learned is as a leader of a group, it's really hard to understand the culture of your group. Uh, because you are the leader, uh, people are reticent to come to tell you everything. They don't share, you know, what might be happening behind the scenes. Um, and it took me a while to sort of understand that because I really thought I knew our culture. Uh, but now I, 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 eyes are wide open, ears are wide open. And I think you've got to sort of build, you know, that trust with your your, your team, mm -hmm. so that they feel comfortable coming to you with, you know, even the slightest of issues. But what if that culture changes? I mean, no well, culture. It changes changed. absolutely. Right. Uh, you know, if if you've got you know people that you know come and go, which happens in any industry, you know, one person can change the culture or a, a dynamic of a group. Mm -hmm. um, so you've always got to be on your toes. You've always got to be listening. And I think the important thing is that building that trust, knowing they can trust you. Uh, to, to, to be there to listen and to help them if you can. Right. Lindsay, do you have, I mean, Pop Sugar must be a totally different type of culture. Yeah, than. clearly. <laughs> we have very different roles. But I would say, too, you know, I think being as transparent as you can with yeah. people on your team is important and realizing, you know, mm -hmm. that it's important to treat everybody like grown-ups and tell them, you know, obviously there's times when you can't convey certain information for whatever reason, but I really value people being transparent mm -hmm. with me, and that's mm -hmm. something that I want to kind of pay forward in my role. And also I think just letting people... Uh, be successful and letting them soar without micromanaging too much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, if you're lucky to have built a really talented, great team, you want to kind of step back and let them do what they can do. Right. And Tiffany? Yeah, I would say listen and be prepared to fight for your team. So I've managed a couple teams um, in my career. And, you know, when I have team members that are boots on the ground and they're in it in the day to day, they come back to me and say, I know we spent a lot of time developing this process, but this process isn't working, right? So this is maybe something else we should do. Really listen to your team and, you know, take a step back and um, trust them. Um, that they know what's going on um, and that they're a great resource. Right. There's a very common theme here. It's, it really is about communication. Yeah, and it, is. Transparency it really and, is. And being prepared to, to do that. Right. And a lot of people aren't comfortable with that, but it's the most direct way to be productive. Right. And that's why you should get a communications degree. <laughs> <laughs> At USC. <laughs> At USC Edinburgh, that's right. Well, I mean, kind of playing off the changing dynamics, obviously when there comes, uh, there's promotions and people are being promoted within and also being people being brought in from the outside, how do you navigate the different, you know, changing relationships that you might have individually with your staff once you've, you know, elevated yourself and gotten promoted to a manager position? That's a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I think it, it also relates to your point about transparency. I think, you know, it's okay to, to, you know, have that sort of awkward conversation about I'm in a new role or you're in a new role. Let's just put it out there. Let's address the elephant in the room. Um, but uh, if ultimately you are promoted and, you, and you're leading a group and maybe they were your friends, um, they can still be your friends, but in a, in a, a professional setting, Everyone has to sort of understand those boundaries. Um, but I think, again, if you have that conversation, hopefully everyone's receptive to it and you can sort of move on. But ultimately, your job is to lead. Um, so it, it can't be personal. Right. And I think, too, if you come to it, I feel very lucky to work at a company that's very collaborative and it's not really, um, you know, people aren't hyper focused on the hierarchy mm -hmm. of who can do what. Um, who gets the final say. So I think that's really helpful in kind of making those transitions a little yeah. bit smoother. But I think you also have to realize, you know, going back to what you said earlier, anytime someone leaves or someone joins the team, the dynamic does shift a little bit and you kind of have to weather a little bit of change uh, when that does happen. Transitions can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I agree with the setting boundaries for sure. Um, also working together as a team to set goals for your team, all of you together, right? So you're not coming in maybe to a new position or role and you're saying, these are the goals I want for my team and this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Sit down together, how should, you know, how should we all move forward together? Right, 
the goals are for our team. Our team. Let's put them together, you know, as, right. a, as a team. Right. Yeah. So this might be a little bit of a feel-good question, but I wanted to know, <laughs> what is uh -oh. one thing that you just absolutely love about your job? <laughs> uh, can I answer it with two things? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, two things, I love the people, I really do. I've got a great team, uh, they are smart, they are hardworking, they're funny. Um, I enjoy being with them during the work day and I also enjoy socializing with them outside of work. Um, the second thing I'd say is, you know, my job has given me the good fortune of, of really, you know, traveling the world and, you know, exotic places from China, Russia, the Middle East, uh, Colombia, um, you know, India, just, I, I've been able to sort of navigate cultures in a business setting. And every culture is different. Every negotiation, every business sort of setting is different. There are formalities, there are informalities, there are nuances that you've got to learn about if you're going to be successful. Um, so I feel very fortunate to, to have been able to experience that. It's amazing. I don't want to copy your answer, but I would say <laughs> the people as well. You know, I really love everyone that I work with, and it's such an exciting place to be because we do have so many people with such a wealth of different experiences mm -hmm. and opinions, and everybody's very fast moving, which I think is by virtue of you know, Pop Sugar being a San Francisco based company and it really has that sort of like tech mindset um, in a media brand. But I would also say too, you know, it's just very fun for me and really rewarding to feel like at this stage of the game that I kind of, you know, have a hand in all the aspects of the content that we're creating day to day. And it can be from something as little as like coming up with a funny meme to put on our socials right. to, you know, getting to work with Lionsgate on our first Pop Sugar Films project with them. So it's really just the range of things that I get to do in a typical day that leaves me feeling really lucky. So I too love my team. Um, I mean, they're very hardworking. Um, they're great. We have a great, I think, personal and business relationship. Um, and then also in our LA office, we have a lot of Trojans, like fight on. I mean, it's amazing. Um, and then I would also say, um, in addition, so I work at an agency, which is a little bit different from actually working, you know, for like on a, um, on a brand specifically. So I get to work with a lot of different brands and clients. So there, there's a benefit to that as well. That's great. So we actually have a question from Facebook. Jenny wants to know, how should recent grads prepare when they are first entering their careers? That's a big question. Yeah, that is. <laughs> um, here's what I, what I would say. Um, if you are just entering your career, know where you are. Um, you're starting out, now's the time to roll up your sleeves. Now is the time to you know, demonstrate yourself. I think it's given that all USC alumni, they are smart. They were smart coming in. Mm -hmm. They're smarter when they graduated. You distinguish yourself by attitude and your work ethic. Um, and sort of my common mantra is, you know, make your job's boss easier. Make your boss mm -hmm. look great. Mm -hmm. um, and the last part of that is make sure you're working for a good boss, someone that is looking out for you and is not going to get in your way, is going to, you know, have those hard conversations with you, have those good conversations with you so that they can help you sort of move up in your, in your career. I would say too, you know, I've, I've spoken with a lot of students here who are about to graduate and one thing that I think is important to keep in mind, you know, we were talking about being adaptable mm -hmm. and how radically things change in the media business. Um, I would say don't box yourself in. Don't think mm -hmm. that, you know, that first job that you get has to be this ideal perfect job. It's mm -hmm. not going to be no matter what, you know, entry level positions, you've got to put in that hard work. Um, but I think too, it's really important to recognize that you may think you want one thing out of your career um, and think may change because like I said you know we were not producing video for Facebook when mm -hmm. I started in journalism that's been a new development um, I was a print journalism major I didn't think I ever wanted to do broadcast once I started doing it I really liked it so I just think don't limit yourself at the outset and be very open to new possibilities and it's okay to make a couple mistakes. Absolutely. The, the, you're going to. You're going to. That's okay. This is That's the how time you make yeah. <laughs> You're young. You have a long career. Right. It's okay. <laughs> Don't get paralyzed. Um, I would say network, network, network. Making sure that you are going to, you know, different, different organizations that have um, resources to meet the right people. So I was at a Sony event, ironically, <laughs> um, last week, um, and there were a lot of recruiters there. So that, you know, that's great for the people that were coming out of college. They got to meet the right people. Um, you get to meet different people at different levels, which is great. So when you're when you're uh, tapped into different uh, community organizations, different business organizations, you're meeting the people that you may not have normally met just on your own. Right. One of the biggest lessons that I learned after leaving Annenberg was networking isn't just networking above, it's 
lateral, it absolutely it below you because you never know what type of contact or whoever whoever you speak with that might help you later on. In your that path. can be absolutely. even more important because they're going to know what jobs you know are available for exactly. you know, that skill set and mm -hmm. that level. Right. Um, I may not know of a job that you know is uh, you know in the other side of the building. Right. So I think it's it's it's, it's critical. <laughs> exactly. Um, I want to go back to something that you mentioned, Corey, about finding a good boss. How what like what qualities or how do you do that? I mean. It's what? hard, right? Um, right. You, you don't know. You can have a very good feeling in an interview. Um, I think it's important to talk to people on their team, um, see what they have to say. You know, I think you have to sort of bounce around the issue a little bit and be careful. Um, but I, I think importantly, you'll know, you know, sort of three to six months in whether or not this is a person you want to invest your career and your life in, mm -hmm. um, you know, based on, again, are they communicating with you? Are they treating people fairly? Are they being transparent? Are they checking in with you to make sure you're doing well? Are they checking in with you to see if you want to take on more work? Are they checking in to make sure you're happy, you're content? Um, I think those are you know, really important you know, qualities. Uh, and, and if they're not doing you know, a lot of those things, and again, they're very busy, so you can't be everything all the time. But if they're not doing that kind of thing, you know, maybe you, wanna, you might want to do a little uh, adjustment, a pivot, maybe you know, start looking for something else. Because yeah. that boss is you know, a, a very important starting point for your career. Totally. And I think it's important too if you do end up in a situation mm -hmm. where you know you maybe don't have a boss who's really serving all of those needs, it's great to find mentors outside of mm -hmm. work too mm -hmm. in your profession um, who can sort of guide you because you know I think no matter what you'll all end up in a job at some point where you don't have an ideal boss and learning how to sort of cope with that and still make sure you're progressing your career even mm -hmm. if you need to stay put for a while is really important. Right. I did learn the most from my worst boss. So that was good. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I feel like we learn the most when we have adversity in our faces. <laughs> um, Tiffany, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, again, someone that's a great listener, um, a cheerleader in your in your corner, it's always good to have, um, and someone that really respects and trusts what you do. So in my career, I've, you know, with social media growing so quickly in one of my positions, I had, you know, a supervisor that really wasn't up to speed on everything um, in, in terms of social media, and she really trusted me when I said, I think this is something we should do for the brand. I think we should step out and do this. You know, Facebook is starting to do this, Snapchat is starting to do this. Um, so having someone that really trusts your opinion and that you can come to is, is awesome. The media landscape is changing so much and so rapidly these days. I mean, do you have any thoughts on how do you lead relative, not just among your, within your own company, but among your peers in other properties and other, other businesses? Hmm. Have you stumped us? <laughs> I know. I feel I feel challenged by that one. Well, for example, let's let's talk about Pop Sugar. Okay. For example, so for Pop Sugar is you know a leading women's news site. They have a lot. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on women's news right now. I mean, where do you see Pop Sugar kind of leading the way among you know your well, you know, I think it's important no matter what um, industry you're in to pay attention to what your competitors are doing mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely try to learn from what's working for other people, what's not working for them, and incorporate that into how we progress. Um, but I think what's been really interesting is just how much we have sort of grown the brand through social media and all these other avenues that, you know, 10 years ago were not really part of the conversation. So I think um, it's it's vital to make sure that you're looking at your peers in the industry and letting that sort of shape the way that you progress at the same time making sure that you stay true to your brand and you're not just sort of trying to chase what mm -hmm. may be working for someone else um, but maybe would not be a fit for you. And I would say as a brand be willing to fail right so mm -hmm. you know if something's up and coming or new step out and try it see if it makes sense for you know your consumers your clients your followers um, and that could be a surprise for you if it works really well and can be something that takes you a whole nother direction. Right, right. Well, I mean, I would like to know, what is one thing that you would tell future journalists, media directors, PR managers, any job in the communication, journalism, public relations field on how to succeed in these industries? Like, what is that one piece of advice that you wish you knew? Again, I think it goes back to something I said before for, from my perspective. I think it's, you know, be prepared to roll up your sleeves and have a great attitude. Just do everything you can. When you're starting out, That's really good. that is the most important time. This is, if not then, when? Mm -hmm. You know, that is your time to really, you know, start your career, launch your future. Um, and just know that um, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna work hard. And that's that's good. It's great. Yeah, I would also say persistence. I 
think that for a lot of young people, they can be a little bit uncertain, a little bit unsure. Um, but it's really important to follow up with people mm -hmm. to, you know, I think a lot of times young people are worried about nagging or sort of overstepping. And it's like, you know, if you don't follow up on those emails, if you don't really put yourself out there, mm -hmm. the opportunities are not just going to walk into your life. So, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're a writer who's pitching, you know, if you don't get a response the first time, follow up, follow up, follow up. I always say too, you know, if there's somebody you really admire in the industry, it does not hurt to just ask them to go to coffee. The mm -hmm. worst that they could do is say no. Right. And they probably, if instead of saying no, will just not respond to you. So it's really worth reaching out and kind of putting yourself out there in that way. Yeah, absolutely. In addition to that, because those are great, I would say, you know, be genuine um, in that when you're coming into a position, um, there's people at all different levels. And I think we talked about this a little bit. Um, you never know who's going to be your next boss, either currently where you are or down the line. Um, so be genuine and open. Right. And I think one thing I'd add to all of this, you know, when you are meeting with people, make sure you've done your research, know who you're sitting down with, know yeah. what, you know, their career path has been so that you look like you've taken the time and that you're actually genuinely interested. You know, the time is very valuable for, for both parties, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, do your research. I've always found that people are very willing to share information, especially with students or recent Absolutely. grads, because mm -hmm. they understand what it was like to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And coffee goes a long way. I've people, also found it. Can, yes. <laughs> yeah. People helped us along the way. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's important for us to pay that forward. Yeah. And be prepared when you're having coffee, right? So come to the table with those questions. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're not going there just to chat and, right. you know, talk about the weather. Like, <laughs> yeah. really do your research right. about that person and what do you want to know from them? Like, you're getting that opportunity with someone. Um, you know to pick their brain exactly and you never know if down the line there's a job that opens up and they remember you having these absolutely. Great questions and they knew that you came in with your mm -hmm. with your notes down and everything so absolutely and I think going back to something else you said I think it is persistence is important and I think the follow-up um, you know just send an email you know once a month just saying hey just want to let you know what I'm doing it doesn't have to be about mm -hmm. your job just you know keep them sort of fresh in your mind because the reality is we meet with a lot of people you know we're obviously very busy but it's nice to hear it. Oh gosh, I remember, you know, right. Paige. I remember, you know, it's it, it's nice to get those kind of things um, because we may have a, an opening that just it just I didn't put it together. Yeah. Um, but we can you can help us, you know, sort of jog our memories. I feel like the art of the follow up is very very mm. difficult, right? I mean, do you have any tips on what works and what doesn't work? You know. I, for me, spell the name right. <laughs> right. That is important. I have an unusual that is spelling. Huge. That it is, is, it is huge. huge. I mean, that's me, that's important. <laughs> Um, and if you can refer to your conversation so that it demonstrates that you were paying attention, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that goes a long way. Right. And then I think just, uh, hey, here's what I'm doing. And, you know, that can be interesting and that can be, you know, new stuff that you didn't talk about uh, over coffee or whichever. Yeah. And I also think this is very minute, but I think, you know, giving people a few days and recognizing that everyone's busy, um, you know, probably don't ask someone if they can meet for coffee, you know, that week if it's Wednesday um, give them a week to respond to you but I think at the same time like don't let that email or that relationship sort of like die on the vine mm -hmm. like keep chasing those things um, because for me especially as a journalist persistence is a very key mm -hmm. skill that you need to have so when I do see people kind of put in that extra effort and really try to make things happen I'm impressed by that if somebody emails me once and then I never hear from them again um, that does kind of color my perception of how good they might be as a reporter or producer, so. Right, spell check, spell check, spell check, <laughs> um, for one. Um, and I think something that I like to do just in following up if I have a meeting with someone is uh, put a little link to something that I've done recently or something that's um, relative to our conversation um, or um, a website they may not have known about, just giving them an additional resource, a reason to open that email. Totally. I mean, one thing I've suggested to some of my friends who have been putting out resumes is that, you know, everything's digital now. So, mm -hmm. like, link everything. I mean, if you have yeah, projects, all, if yep. you have videos that you've produced, if you have stories that you've written, like, link to that. Yeah. Because people are normally getting your resume through, you know, email or some online automated system. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's always important to do that. We actually have a question from Facebook um, from Tal. He wants to know, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self navigating our industry? And is there anything that you would do differently? I like to believe that I have no regrets. <laughs> there are moments where I'm, that are questionable, like, hmm, I probably could have done something a little bit different. <laughs> hmm. I don't know that I have any regrets. I mean, I, I, I sincerely mean that because I think, again, I've learned from, you know, bad experiences, I've, which I've put myself in. I've learned from bad bosses. I've learned from good. Um, and I think it's sort of, you know, it was my journey. 
Um, so I don't, I don't know that I have, you know, something I would change. Um, I mean, I, you could always improve yourself. There's no question. But uh, I, tell, I still tell myself that. So um, that still is a continuing journey. Uh, but nothing, nothing, you know, terribly particular. I would say no regrets. Um, I am proud of myself, like happy, glad that I, I was really tapped into like the whole networking thing. It's really served me well in my career um, and also being open. So there at times were positions um, where someone came to me about um, a job and I wasn't that excited about it. However, five years later, that position was almost like a like a building ground for another position that I wanted later on in life. So being open to different tasks and jobs was something that I'm, I'm really happy I did. Yeah, I think for me, Again, I, I don't have any regrets. I think yeah. you continue to learn in your career. But I do think that, you know, kind of going with my gut earlier in my career, there were some things that I really sort of belabored for a long time and decisions that I really tortured myself over that in hindsight, yeah. it's like I knew what the right thing to do was. Um, but I also think that just comes with age and confidence mm -hmm. and like learning experiences that you get more comfortable kind of trusting those instincts and and trusting yourself to make those decisions. And now you have that perspective though because right. of that learning experience. And that makes it yeah. easier. I'd know? also tell myself to buy Apple stock. That would have been wise. <laughs> um, we have another question from Amniel. How do you break into mid-level to senior level communication and marketing positions. I feel like a lot of advice that's out there is usually for recent grads and young alumni, but yeah. you know, like careers change, lives change. And so sometimes you're breaking into something new or you want to make a pivot to something else. Yeah. How do you navigate that when you're at the mid level to senior level? Well, I'll say at your current company, stay visible, right? So make sure that you're being seen by all the right people and you're doing the work. Um, that would be my recommendation. And I think, too, you know, if you want to move into a specific role that you might have your eye on, mm -hmm. really look for ways, you know, going back to what Corey was saying about doing the work that needs to get done, look for ways that you can support that team, that you can sort of offer your help to them. I think just kind of um, looking for those ways that you can make yourself useful mm -hmm. helps keep you on everybody's radar yeah. and can also prove like, oh, this might be a person who could step into this role. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly right because you can make there are 24 hours in the day. You can finish your job at night at night. Right. Still got a couple hours to help this other team out and say, <laughs> look, I'm willing to do this yeah. basically for free. It's a nice little sort of entryway to say, look, I'm committed. I want this this badly. Go above and beyond. Absolutely. Right. We have another question from Shelly. How do you make time to be a manager as well as do your job? I mean, managing, I think, is <laughs> a whole separate job on top of your day to day that you have. Um, how do you navigate that? Uh, I would say I could probably na navigate that better, um, but it is, it comes down to time management and, and also prioritizing. I mean, if you've got a big admin issue um, on the management side, look, you, you got to address that. Um, but then you also have to take the 10 calls that are, you know, on your, on your uh, call list. Um, it, it's difficult, but it's time management and just not being paralyzed by it and just going in and doing it. Yeah, I think it, it's always a challenge, and I feel like I, I don't always do it as well as I could, but I think the key is really, you know, my team, pretty much everybody that I work with um, in a formal managing relationship or otherwise is really self-sufficient, and I know that I can trust them to do their job, so I think it's a blend of being there um, and, you know, maintaining those relationships, checking in with them, but also if you can create a sense that you're accessible to them, they'll yeah. come to you when, when they need you. Um, and so that's something that I always am striving to sort of build those great relationships where if people do need you, they can come to you. Um, but if they don't, you can sort of just let them um, do their thing, honestly. Yeah, I think having leadership training is important and not all companies do that. Um, that's something that Golan does really well. Um, so it allows me to carve out time for leadership training to learn and develop and continue to be a good leader and make time for my team. Right, because we're always learning, right? Mm -hmm. always Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that sounds like a great note uh, to wrap up on. Thank you, Tiffany, Lindsay, and Corey. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, fight on, guys. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on. <laughs>